Hey guys, and welcome to this video on algorithm analysis. So in this video, we want to prove that 3n plus 4 is little o of n squared. And so we need to know what the definition of little o is. And so here, on the next page, I have the definition of little o in the red rectangle below. And it states a function that we call f of n belongs to little o of g of n if and only if the function f of n grows less than some constant c times g of n for all values of n greater than or equal to k, where our constant c is greater than zero and our constant k is greater than zero. So they're both positive constants. Now, this means for all values of c, uh, there exists some k value such that our function f of n is greater than or equal to zero and it grows strictly less than some constant c times g of n for all values of n greater than or equal to k. All right, the value of k should not be dependent on the variable n. However, it can be dependent on uh, the c constant. So let's go ahead and get started by identifying our function f of n and by identifying our function g of n. All right, so our function f of n is equal to 3 times n plus 4 and our function g of n is equal to n squared and this was defined at the very beginning all right and what we want to do is we want uh, to we want to show that f of n is less than some constant times g of n for all values of n greater than or equal to k. And um, I might not write this statement uh, every single time, but just know that it's there. All right, so now let's plug in our function f of n and our function g of n into the statement. So now we get this is equal to 3n plus 4 less than c times n squared. And again, for all values of n greater than or equal to k. And now what I want to do is I want to get our n value to one side. And I want to really get our c um, constant to another side, uh, to the opposite side. But uh, that's going to take a little bit of manipulation here. So let's go ahead and try to first get the n's all to one side. So now we just subtract 3 times n from both sides. And we get 4 is less than c times n squared minus 3n. Okay, and that's for all values of n greater than or equal to k. Now, what we, what I'm about to do is something um, a little, you know, uh, it takes a little practice to kind of see these type of things. Um, I'm going to do some manipulation of our problem here because I see that we have n squared. So I'm already thinking that if I can make a perfect square, then I can take the square root of both sides and I get rid of the n squared and um, I can get the variable n by itself. So just uh, go with me on this one here. I'm going to multiply both sides times 4 times c. So now we're going to get 16c is less than 4c squared times n squared minus 12cn for all values of n greater than or equal to k. All right, now I'm going to uh, add 9 to both sides to get a perfect square. So we get 16c plus 9 is less than 4c squared times n squared minus 12cn plus 9 for all values of n greater than or equal to k. All right, and now we get our perfect square. So we get 16 times C plus nine is less than um, two C times N minus three squared. And so that's basically what we really wanted to do. So now I could take the square root of both sides and um, get, that, get that N value by itself. And so again, this is for all values of n greater than or equal to k. So now this is equal to the square root 
of 16 times C plus 9 and it's less than 2 times CN minus 3. And now we're going to add 3 to both sides. So we get the square root of 16 times C plus 9 plus 3 is less than 2 times C times N. All right, and again, both of those are for all values of n greater than or equal to k. So I'm going to put that here as well. All right, so let's rewrite this on another page, that last equation. So we, we had the square root of 16 times c plus 9, and then we had um, plus 3. All right. And that's less than we had 2 times c times n. So now, if we divide both sides by 2 times c, we get the square root of 16c plus 9 plus 3, all divided by 2 times c, is less than n. All right, and both of these are for all values of n greater than or equal to k for all values of n greater than or equal to k. So, what this means, if we're looking at our, uh, are looking here at n being greater than or equal to k, that means that we just need to choose a k value, a k value greater than the square root of 16 times c plus 9 divided by 2 times c and I cannot forget that plus 3 on top so we choose a value that's greater than this for k this statement will always be true so what would be a a value uh, for k that's greater than that well if we choose we let uh, we let k be equal to um, the square root of 16 c plus 9, plus 3, all over 2 times c, plus 1. Now, we can, um, we'll be able to see that this would make our original equation true always, no matter what, uh, no matter what value c is. All right? So, that's basically it. So, now I can say, um, choose k equal uh, that number plus 1. And now we have proven, so I'm going to put therefore, uh, choose k uh, greater than, uh, let me redo that, choose k greater than uh, square root 16c plus 9 plus 3 over 2c, and we have proven, I guess I go to another page here, f of n belongs to little o of g of n, which implies uh, 3n plus 4 belongs to little o of n squared. All right. Now that we've done it this long way, maybe we should try a shortcut. So what we can do is we can use limits. So I'm just going to clear this here. And we're going to use limits now. So what we can do is we can use the limit as uh, n. So let me change that. The limit as n approaches infinity of f of n divided by g of n. And if, I'm going to put if this equals uh, 0, then f of n belongs to little o of g of n. All right. And so again, our f of n was 3n plus 1. So let's go ahead and do this now. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity. We have 3n plus 1. And our g of n was n squared, so over n squared. 
and this is equal to um, the limit as n approaches infinity of uh, 3n over n squared plus 1 over, oh, plus the limit as n approaches to infinity of 1 over n squared. And this is just equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of 3 over n plus the limit of the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n squared is equal to 0 and this is equal to 0 plus 0 which equals 0 and so therefore I'm going to use the three dots for therefore our function uh, f of n belongs to little o of g of n which implies that 3n plus 4 belongs to little o of n squared. Okay, so that's our answer. I hope I explained it very well, um, showing how to prove this two different ways. Um, thank you guys for watching. Please leave any questions you have in the comments section. Don't forget to hit that like button and don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well. Um, if you found this helpful, please share it. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.